Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J. Gale. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are again. It is Monday, February the 24th. This is Clyde J. Gale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. And this is episode 35. And I'm here with my artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hi, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. And with this episode, we have a special guest. Kelly Folsom, who is a acting professional artist. Hello, Kelly. Hi there. Good to be here, Clyde. Thank you guys for inviting me. You're welcome. You're very welcome to the podcast. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I am, as we stated, a Texas, Oklahoma girl who came from nothing and uh, certainly had no art uh, background whatsoever, but uh, all of that said, somehow became a professional fine artist, (laughs) and I've been doing that um, since 2011, as well as teaching. Um, I am a, I love teaching, and I'm an artist mentor as well, and run a uh, online art membership course, as well as some mentoring programs to help artists find their artistic voice. What, what style of art do you do, or do you create, rather? Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I am what would be called a representational painter. Sometimes it's uh, called classical art or traditional art. Uh, my primary area of uh, specialty, I guess, would be still life painting. Um, in oils. So much like if you know the artist Chardin, um, artists like that, it's kind of been that, that lineage. What's your, what's your website address so our listeners can uh, check out your art? Um, I have two websites. One is for my artwork, uh, kellyfolsom.com. And the other website is www.artlifewithkelly.com, and that is the education website that hosts all of the uh, courses that I offer. Fantastic. And for our listeners, I've started a uh, webpage for our, specifically uh, for the Artist Friends podcast, and you can go to uh, www.talkartpodcast.com. I've also put a link to uh, Kelly's page up there and uh, some other information. So going forward, you, you folks can uh, check that out. Diane, you got any questions for Kelly? Well, I know she's a new Anne. So how's your sister doing with her new baby? 
<laughs> um, well, she's doing good. I guess she's the first time um, mama, so she's hanging in there. She's got through, well, she's not quite through her first week, uh, but he's perfect. He's, he's <laughs> just uh, perfection in human form. I don't know. I don't know how he turned out so perfect, but he just is, you know. <laughs> yeah, babies are wonderful. Yeah. yeah. He's and I know you have um, classes coming up in Scottsdale. That sounds pretty exciting. How'd that happen? Um, I do. I have a workshop in Scottsdale, Arizona, at the Scottsdale Artist School that is going to be April 6th through the 10th. Um, I believe this is my third year to teach there. Um, and it's just a really great place to be. It's uh, a wonderful school. It has a really long history and uh, so many wonderful representational artists that instruct there. And so anytime you're there, either teaching or taking a workshop, and I've taken several workshops there myself, um, there are numerous other artists who are there teaching as well and taking classes. So it's just such a great opportunity to meet other artists just in general and get out of, you know, our, our little lonely studio <laughs> and yeah. being in Scottsdale with palm trees and sunny skies is especially mm -hmm. great in the winter time too. Yeah. So, um, I think I, I took, I can't remember how I got started teaching there. Um, I think I was at a show at the legacy gallery and went in to visit the uh, uh, visit the school and meet the director and just spoke to them at that point about uh, teaching workshops. So, cool. fantastic! And I see you just got into the um, National um, Oil Painters America show too. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I love Oil Painters of America. Yeah, they're um, they're they're dedicated to preserving you know, representational art. And so it's just a fantastic organization. I've been a part of it since, uh, well, the year that I graduated art school in 2011. And uh, I've been fortunate to meet, again, just some amazing artists through that organization and have had the privilege to show in, in uh, many of their shows, not all of their shows, but many of them. So it's been a great experience. Yeah, that's a big honor. I'm, I'm, I'm a member of OPA, too. Oh, awesome. I, I haven't been lucky enough to get into any of the shows yet, though. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've only it, been in the, I've, I think it's been two or three years now that I've been in you know, OPA. Yeah, but. good for you. Yeah, it's it can be tough, and getting those rejections is never fun. <laughs> and I actually am, will have a blog post coming out Wednesday all about that, and we'll be including a screenshot of all of my red, X letters along with the little green check marks, you know, um, because it's just part of it. It's part of being an artist and it's not a fun, yeah. part, but <laughs> we all experience, <laughs> I still get rejected from shows to this day. So exactly. And it's, it's, it's hard to believe. I mean, I, your art is so beautiful and so wonderful, but, uh, that rejection aspect, uh, that's something that I've, uh, been pursuing entering in uh, various exhibitions and online contests and out of uh, maybe every five that I enter uh, three I get rejected <laughs> yeah and, well yeah. that's still a pretty good acceptance rate you know I mean two out of five um, that's something I actually talked about in the blog that'll come out on Wednesday um, was I actually counted up how many paintings have I submitted since 2011. <laughs> and it was like 100 paintings, and um, 23 of them were accepted, you know, in the last, what, nine years. So, I mean, you're talking about maybe a 25% success rate, which is actually pretty good. <laughs> I'd, I'd be crying. Yeah. Oh, I'd be crying so much <laughs> if I had that many. <laughs> You have got a tough skin. You have, oh, you have. <laughs> well, and I think it's more than a tough skin, though. I think it's, um, I mean, in the beginning, it was more of just get over it and get a tough skin. And, of course, my experience in art school was um, pretty brutal in the end, you know, as far as the criticism that you yeah, get. Yeah, critiques in school were <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so you, you did. And then you, in my last year of art school, it was like really finding my footing as to what I wanted to create. And I, I would, you know, of course, listen to what the instructors had to say. But then also, at the end of the day, I thought, you know, they're not going to be here next year. I'm going to be on my own and I'm going to have to decide, you know, what I believe in and what I stand for, what I want to create. And it's kind of the same thing with rejections, you know, it always stings. It never feels good. Always there's like butterflies in the gut, you know, whenever you go to check your email or whatever. And I, I'm like, I don't think that ever goes away. And I consider myself to be pretty confident at this point. But I still feel that, you know, that uh, sort of response in the body to that. And, um, but the thing for me is like, uh, I just, I recommend, you know, you really got to get clear on your why and your purpose as an artist. And so, although those things sting, you have to like reconnect with, you know, this is the art I believe I'm here to create and I'm doing my absolute best. I know that I'm doing my best and I'm putting in the time and, you know, it, that as the saying goes, that old will is going to turn around again, you know. So anyways, that's, that's just kind of how I deal with it. One of the yeah, ways. And, and the thing is, too, they, they can only accept so many people. Like, exactly. They can only have so much space on their walls. So, yeah. you know, and they get loads and loads of entries. So it's and exactly. Even with, you know, on, online competitions, it's the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> they can only uh, select so many to, uh, to, put, the, to put up online. Because some people would think, wow, it's unlimited. Well, no, they only have so much room because if they, if they accepted everybody, it would dilute the value <laughs> of the contest. You know, I've, uh, I've been fortunate that I've entered in, the, in several contests and there were thousands of entries and uh, I, you know, got accepted and, and uh, you know, placed. I've won... <laughs> the bottom of the award special recognition that's the last award you get but i'm moving up out of several thousand entries at least i got a special recognition yeah that made me you know excited and it my original purpose of entering these was following the recommendation of stephen bauman he said if you want to uh, improve your art uh go find online contests and our local exhibitions look at previous winners and then create a piece of art specifically for that contest and then enter it. And each time you do that, you are improving your artwork, work with that in your mind. If you win something, then that's icing on the cake, you know? If uh, So I've won. Now when I enter, if I don't win or if I don't get accepted, I get kind of depressed. But, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think, though, when you start entering a lot of them, you, you kind of lose track. I, I mean, I used to really keep records of like when the um, notices would come out, you know, when they were going to notify you whether you got accepted or not. And I had it marked on the calendar. So I would like eagerly watch my email or whatever for, for, <laughs> for the response. I don't do that anymore. It's like <laughs> I enter it and I forget about it and move on to the next one. And just, you know, then I get a surprise if I get in. So it's, I'm sorry, Diane. I still, I, I still keep. <laughs> of course, like I said, I've only been trying to do this professionally since 2017, so I haven't been burnt enough yet. You know, <laughs> God, I hope I never get to where I, I enter a hundred images and only 23 win. <laughs> I hope I never get to that point. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kelly. I really more power to you. You do have a tough skin. I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> Constance, you got any questions you want to you want to ask Kelly? Uh, no, I, I'm not really. <laughs> well, I'm just looking at everything. Got internet issues, so <laughs> I just feel a little out of the water with my <laughs> I'm on the phone instead of the laptop, so it's weird. Well, first of all, I want to I want to thank you, Kelly, for your art, keeping up the representational you know art uh too many times we've had these discussions in previous podcasts how the modern art and to me it looks like people's throwing paint against canvas and how it seems like to the to the non-art person like that's the only kind of art that is available that is making it out there and it's nice to know that there i have there's a fellow representational artist 
when I was growing up, we didn't even use that word. We just called it traditional art. You know, they even changed the word now. You know, it's representational. <laughs> right, right. You know, so I uh, I appreciate the, your uh, your work uh, mm -hmm. of uh, you yeah. know keeping that tradition up, you know, and everything. And I think it's coming around. Diane and I we've we've discussed this before, right, Diane? Where it it's it's making a comeback. It seems like, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I well, when I was in college, the um, thing was the modern art whole movement <laughs> in the seventies and sixties. Mm -hmm. So. It was really hard being an artist in some respects because while well, I was representational too, I was more into, you know, doing that uh, kind of thing than the abstract. And it was hard because everybody was saying, no, oh, you know, you don't need to do that. You want to just put your feelings on the canvas and it doesn't have to look like anything. And, you know, it was, it was kind of going against the grain at the time. But, um, yeah, I've persevered. And, now it's coming, kind of coming back around again. Right, right. Yeah, it's really, it really is amazing how such a short period of time in history almost wiped out representational art. And um, it's, when you think about it, it's like from, you know, maybe the 20s, 30s, 40s to, you know, not that long ago, um, that was, you know, sort of the, the reigning supreme, this is the, this is art now, you know. And as you said, I've met so many people through my online class, classes like yourself, Diane, who went to, or actually went to art college. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the 60s, 70s, and they all tell me the exact same story that you just told. And, of course, that's still going on today, you know. But um, with that being said, it's, you know, like y'all say, it is coming back and we have a lot of um, schools and organizations that are fostering, you know, the growth of representational art. Um, so it is definitely on the rise. And I think that's why it's so incredibly important that we support those organizations, even if we get into those shows or not, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. and, and that's also why it's so important that we put our work out there because that is part of education, you know, just, putting the work out there, even if it's on social media, you know, it is, that is um, education and marketing, you know, and um, as uh, Clyde said, you know, maybe some people don't even know that this kind of art still exists or, uh, <laughs> you know, is around, and there's so many ways to reach people now and, and to uh, reach a lot of people now with representational art it doesn't just have to be through a fancy gallery or through a museum or you know stuff like that we can reach them ourselves through our uh, websites and our social media and um, I you know that's why I'm also kind of a firm believer in um, continuing to do the work and continuing to market it and continuing to promote your own work on the regular um, in service of something bigger than ourselves, you know, um, because I think sometimes that's, it's so easy to feel dejected or to feel disenfranchised whenever you are um, rejected from shows or whatever that are supposed to be supporting your style of work, right? Um, so it's really easy to get jaded and, and disen disenfranchised, so to speak. Um, but I think that's where, again, coming back to um, your belief, your, your vision, what you love, um, and reconnecting with that and having like a bigger vision that goes beyond um, what's in it for me, you know. <laughs> I kind of I kind of learned that. I feel like I learned that so long ago. Like it's not about me, you know. Um, the less it can be about me, the better. <laughs> Absolutely, that, that is so well said. I am so glad you. Yeah, you 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 basically uh, in a few words. Uh, said what uh diane constance and i have been preaching in our in all of our episodes <laughs> right. indirectly or directly we we've been you know talking about that and in, encouraging our listeners to uh, join us or to at least continue because not all of our listeners are artists we have uh this podcast is widely distributed across my network and we have uh folks of all categories of all age groups that listen in and that are interested about art and want to learn about art. And so it, we do have, I think as artists, we have a certain uh, educational responsibility. 
you know, to the, to the general public. And it's not about, uh, you know, necessary what, sure we want to sell or we have to make a living, but it is about the, the, the higher level or the, the higher, uh, higher purpose, I guess. And, uh, thank you, Kelly. That was a very, very condensed, uh, little speech there. I appreciate that. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> I can tell it's, it's, it's in your heart. You, uh, you really believe that that's, that's important. And I think we're very fortunate, uh, to have artists out there in the world like you, uh, you know, pursuing, pursuing that goal. Well, we are about ready to wrap things up here. Time went by really, really quick. Um, Kelly, do you have any other than, okay, you mentioned Scottsdale, uh, of course. Yes. You, have any, you have any exhibitions coming up or anything else that you want to you wanna promote? This is, a, this is your chance to uh, push it. Push it. <laughs> push it. Push well, um, we actually, uh, one of my you know, biggest missions and visions in this life is my teaching. And I absolutely love what I do there with my students and members. And so um, I will let everybody know that if they're interested in studying with me, you can actually get some con some free videos from me right now. There is uh, a free membership on my website, Art Life with Kelly, called Intro to Art Life. It is totally free. And you get five videos um, immediately to help you with your composition, with lighting a still life, setting up a still life, um, as well as some painting tutorials there. Um, and then um, we have Vital Art Sessions, which is my monthly online membership group, and that will be opening for uh, April 1st. Actually before that, but basically April 1st, which I'm super excited about. So we only open that quarterly for new um, students to come in. Um, so it will be open for a short period of time there and just super excited to meet anybody new who's interested. And with that, you get weekly, uh, weekly lessons in that group. And it's just such a fantastic community as well. We have about 260 um, artists in there right now who um, are painting on the daily, posting their work, getting critiques, and of course I uh, we have the lesson paintings, but we also I also try to push everybody to do their own independent work. So we have independent painting critiques, and of course I offer private critiques as well on the side. So um, it's really a great place for people to get started and um, to grow in you know in an affordable way, but also a very supportive nurturing way because the the group is incredibly positive and supportive i won't tolerate anything else so <laughs> so anyway so that's that's what i have coming up and then of course as diane mentioned the oil painters of america show um i'll have a piece in the american women artists show at the booth museum and uh women artists of the west um, exhibition there i have a piece in that show as well in tucson arizona and i'll actually be at that uh, exhibition March uh, 27th and I'll be presenting there on art business so yeah so that's what's that website again so for our listeners for for your coursework and everything um it's www.artlife with Kelly so you get to live the art life with me <laughs> art life with Kelly yeah right. it's Kelly with an I yes Kelly with an I <laughs> yes <laughs> Yes, K E L L I, and then yes. her last name is Folsom, F O L S O M. Yes, like Folsom Prison, if you know who Johnny Cash is. <laughs> oh, Lord, that's not, that's not a good comparison. <laughs> yeah. oh, Diane and Constance, you got anything you want to mention? You want to push? This is your opportunity. Come on. Uh, not right now, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, either i don't have anything going right yet either That's just make about. more art yeah okay well, we're gonna wrap <laughs> this thing, this episode up this is clyde jkl you have been listening to the artist friends podcast episode 35 for february the 24th 2020 and our guest was kelly Folsom, a fantastic artist uh check out her her websites and as i stated if you go to uh talkartpodcast.com. Well, I got to memorize that. Talk, www.talkartpodcast.com. 
you'll find links to videos. Uh, Kelly's page is also linked there. Thank you so much, Kelly, for joining us. It was a real pleasure. Thank you, Clyde. It's my honor. Thank you. Okay. No, thank Bye. you, Kelly. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> and <laughs> All right. Bye bye, Diane. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Bye, bye Kelly. Con <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye, Constance. <laughs> and bye bye, Kelly. Thank again. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye, everybody. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com this podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.